This morning, in this symposium, we are focusing on a very special topic, the sometimes vexing problem of integrating contemporary architecture into historical urban settings. This is one of the purposes of the Getty Conservation Institute's Modern Architecture Initiative, which has been devised to bring a strategic focus to the challenges of preserving modern architecture in terms both of the materials of individual buildings and of the physical and social context for which they were built, sometimes 50, even 70 years ago. To guide us through this vexing topic, we've gathered some of the world's best and most experienced architects. Tom Beebe, Jürgen Mayer H., Raphael Moneo, Richard Rogers, and Denise Scott Brown, and our moderator, the Pulitzer Prize winning architectural critic, Paul Goldberger. We are grateful to them for giving us so much of their valuable time and for flying from so far away to be with us this morning and throughout the day. It is a sign of their dedication to the topic and to the Getty Conservation Institute that they have come to be with us today. Now sit tight. It's going to be a day of riveting lectures and conversations, one I'm sure you'll never forget. It's now my very great pleasure to introduce the director of the Getty Conservation Institute, Tim Whalen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Getty. It's a delight that you've all come to spend a day with us, a long day. I think it's going to be an amazing day, and I thank you all for being here. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Getty Conservation Institute, it is one of the four operating programs of the J. Paul Getty Trust, and our mission is to advance the practice of conservation. Uh, the practice of conservation in the visual arts, which we define uh, broadly to include collections and objects, but also cultural heritage places from archaeological sites to historic city centers to monuments. I think uh, you know about much of our work, uh, the work we do in LA. Jim just mentioned our Conserving Modern Architecture Initiative, which we launched last year. Uh, we have another uh, important initiative uh, that focuses on the conservation of modern and contemporary art, uh, led by Tom Lerner, who's with us today. Um, uh, and so those are kind of public things that you probably know a lot about. But indeed, for many years, the Getty Conservation Institute has been engaged in initiatives related broadly to the conservation of historic cities and urban environments. In fact, as far back as 19, the early 1990s, we worked in Quito, Ecuador, which had recently been uh, inscribed as the very first World Heritage City. And we worked there with uh, colleagues uh, to, I think, very good end. Since uh, 2005, we've been working with the Organization of World Heritage Cities uh, which, uh, and helping them organize a scientific program at their uh, biannual meetings, uh, which we'll be doing, in fact, this coming November in Oaxaca when they meet. And uh, we have contributed uh, to designing and implementing and running for a number of years now a mayor's workshop, which brings tools to the mayors of historic cities on the list. Our current work in this realm also extends to our hometown here in LA, and we've been working with the Department of City Planning uh, on something that many of you will have heard of, uh, I hope, called Survey LA, which is the first comprehensive survey of historic resources in Los Angeles, and that uh, inventory will soon reside on uh, a state-of-the-art modern GIS-based public interface that will be available to um, anyone who has access to the web, so a growing number, obviously. And indeed, finally, uh, we've been working in Southeast Asia uh, in a number of places, but at the moment uh, working in Malaysia specifically with professionals there to conserve their rich heritage and bring colleagues into uh, connection with practices in other uh, places in, around the world. The issue of adding new layers to much-loved historic environments is one, indeed, that has created more debate than virtually any other topic in our field in, over the last decade or so. How we change and add to the existing urban fabric is something that planners and architects have been musing about and arguing about for centuries. For example, the urban renewal plans uh, carried out in Rome in the 16th century and implemented under Pope Sixtus V recognized the legacy of ancient Rome and the political power of architecture in society when it integrated ancient buildings into the new boulevards that were carved through Rome to accommodate uh, the, the pilgrims that were coming there in which Rome hoped to invite to counter the Reformation. 
In the process of these new roads, however, uh, many ancient sites were destroyed, and many citizens, even in 16th century Rome, opposed this destruction. There are many other historic examples of how our layering new over old um, have uh, affected thinking over the last century or so. Uh, everyone will be familiar with uh, the Ausmann Plan of Paris, uh, which was, as you know, fully implemented in the 19th century, or indeed recent debates about the reintegration of Berlin following the reunification of Berlin and Germany in 1990. Further, in the last decade, there have been a number of high-profile controversies, including the removal of uh, the Dresden-Elba Valley from the World Heritage List back in, nine, in 2009. And that was owing to the building of a four-lane bridge that negatively impacted the historical cultural landscape that had been identified, frankly, as the principal universal value for which that city and that landscape was inscribed. So the World Heritage uh, Committee removed that from the list. And then there's, you'll have read much in the uh, past few years about the proposed Gazprom Tower that will be built in the, uh, just outside of the historic core of St. Petersburg. These are two very recent examples, but issues that we're here to speak about, and you can see these uh, concerns remain alive and well. The prosperity of the late 20th century, the rise of global corporations, and the desire for architectural distinctiveness have brought this issue to the forefront. We have the heritage community pitched against architects and developers. On one side, or one side, is accused of nimbyism and the ossification of our urban environment. And the other side is accused of careless destruction of history. Well, ladies and gentlemen, somewhere here in the middle of all of this, uh, there is opportunity for rational debate, and that's, I think, why we're all here today. Today, we hope to explore questions of how we can create tomorrow's heritage without destroying what communities cherish from the past. How can contemporary architecture contribute to the interpretation of the historic urban environment and create vibrant new places? How do architects go about creating successful relationships between existing historic fabric and new buildings? Architects are, of course, the protagonists, but policymakers, planners, and patrons of new buildings also play a role. The Getty Conservation Institute's work is international, and we are immersed in the historic environment in many, many places. However, let me say that we come with our own position on this issue, and I think it is worth being upfront about it here. Our position recognizes that it is not the style or architectural language that is important, but the quality of the new work and the relationship between old and new. There is room for a variety of architectural expressions, and further, there is room for the creativity of architects of each generation to contribute to the evolution of the historic fabric in its own way. However, I do think that it is beholden on those creators to ensure that their contributions enrich rather than diminish the existing context. During the day today, we'll hear from five architects who have been at the forefront of this debate throughout their careers. They will each present their work, and we look forward to hearing how each of them has approached this issue and how they see their work contributing to the evolution of the, uh, the urban and historic environment. Tonight, we have asked our guest speakers to join us in a panel discussion where we can explore some of the ideas that they present during today. The distinguished architectural critic Paul Goldberger will set the scene for today's symposium with his introductory presentation, Place, Time, and Architecture, setting out the issues of the day. At this evening's panel, Paul will moderate what I hope will be a lively discussion amongst the architects. 